Welcome to the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. Uh, today is Tuesday, October 17th. Um, Councilmember Joe Buscaino, Chair of the T3 Committee, awaiting the arrival of Mr. Corcoran, who should be here shortly. Um, so let's begin uh, with item number one. Good afternoon, John White, City Clerk. Item one, verbal presentation from the Los Angeles Tourism and Convention Board, Discover Los Angeles on the Everyone is Welcome marketing campaign. Fantastic. We have before us the general manager, Don Liu, uh, with LA Tourism. And, and please come up. And I'm um, looking forward to this report. Hope you're all well. Thanks for your efforts. Patty, good morning. Commissioner, how are you? Commissioner. John Budaval? John. John, how are you? Fantastic. Well, good afternoon, Councilman. We are um, delighted to be here and appreciate your invitation to come to present to you today. In fact, the timing is perfect. Um, we had just presented to Doan and the CTD Commission um, our new expanded uh, marketing campaign. Um, we're just getting ready to roll it out. The Commission um, th liked what they saw. Uh, and you'll receive, this is going to look a little familiar to you because you'll recall back at um, National Travel and Tourism Week, uh, I think it was May of last of this year, we presented our welcome initiative. And what we have done is we have taken that and we have expanded it to a full campaign um, that we are moving forward with. So I'm going to have um, John Budava. John's our uh, Vice President of Brand Marketing. So he'll Fantastic. walk you um, through it and what our plans are. Before I hit John, sure. Mr. Liu, would you like to say a few words before we begin the presentation? Okay. The department is fairly new and, uh, and uh, we're all starting to uh, get used to our new relationships, but uh, it's been a great one with LATCB, LA Tourism Convention Board, and so uh, it's been very, very helpful uh, to me uh, in my new role. But um, uh, this campaign, as Patty mentioned, was launched uh, at the beginning of the year uh, in response to uh, the travel ban. Um, it uh, touched the hearts of people all over the world. And uh, uh, it just made a lot of sense uh, to continue uh, and build on that campaign. So you'll see uh, in John's presentation today uh, what we plan on doing uh, for the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I think you'll go into some of the, the purchasing yeah, plans sure. and the buy. OK, thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Don. Um, John, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Councilman. So if you can get the mic closer. We yeah, have sure. folks who are listening and tuning in. Is that okay? You guys hear me okay? Thank you. <clears throat> so, as Don mentioned, this was re this is really an evolution of our Everyone is Welcome initiative that we launched earlier this year. And we found from this campaign, we had such great success from it. Uh, we, we hit over 12 billion, with a B, impressions across all our media channels that we ran. Uh. And it was, it, it was one of the most um, impactful campaigns that I've ever worked on with LA Tourism. I've been there almost 10 years now in January, and it was very sort of game-changing, I think. But um, so it's, it's around this idea of Los Angeles welcomes everyone, and that's something that I think is evergreen and will will live will live on for a long time. But it's it's part of this, um, you know, like we said, it kind of struck a chord, an emotional chord, uh, with people around the world, and we wanted to kind of take that and really expand on it and and expand on the success of that. Um, the message, you know, we want to kind of take that message to. Uh, to continue to welcome everyone here. Um, so, but also take it out of the mindset of a travel ban or anything sort of driven towards that. This is really sort of broadened out to be a campaign that are sort of, that, that's uplifting. It's a symbol of freedom, humanity, uh, diversity. Um, we, we've done a lot of research and focus groups on what really compels travelers to come to Los Angeles. And what we found from the, that research is sort of this one core idea that comes out of it is the lifestyle here is very different than anywhere else in the world. It's not only the diversity, it's not just the culture and the people, it's kind of all of that blended in together. The sunsets and the weather help quite a bit too, but overall it's really the lifestyle and the people here that make, make a difference and really compel people to come and visit Los Angeles. So we wanted to kind of take that and really expand it out. And so the paper plane sort of serves as this, um, you know, metaphor to travelers coming from all over the world, international travelers from all over the world their unique cultures, sort of visually blending that into what we did in the campaign with these different textures on the planes. And you'll see it when we play the video of kind of that, how that broke out. So kind of building on the success of the campaign, 
we're going to extend this into a full campaign, but with more of a destination focus. Broaden it out to our neighborhoods, broaden it out to kind of a broader travel message um, that we can kind of really play out all these different uh, scenarios. So this is kind of a montage of all the different things that we shot in the commercial. Um, but again, separate from the travel ban, this, this is um, really an uplifting story and a celebratory story. It's a happy story. It's LA's people and its neighborhoods and how we, um, you know, why, why it makes us different. So, uh, why it makes us different across the world. Um, again, going into the sort of real reason to visit, um, regardless of political climate or what, el what else is going on. LA's always been this sort of this free island of, and everybody is different here and it's accepted and we heard a lot of that in the focus groups like I mentioned. Um, and everyone should visit Los Angeles and here's kind of why, that's really what we're saying. What we did um, in addition to the everyone is welcome initial campaign is started breaking this out into sort of what we call vignettes. Um, Venice welcomes everyone, downtown welcomes everyone, Echo Park welcomes everyone, Silver Lake welcomes everyone. So these can go on and on and on sure. to really focus in in our neighborhoods and really tap into all the different expansive areas of LA. Um, you know, LA is very different obviously in, in how horizontal we are and how, how many sort of cities within cities we have. So really that's kind of the idea. Um, this is a little bit hard to read, but you'll see kind of the colors of the flow chart there. But this is our media plan of how we'll push this out going forward across all our different markets. Our key focal points and focal markets are both domestic and international, but we, we measure those by kind of our top 10 across the globe of how many visitors are coming from those markets and really what's the ROI in those markets. So that's kind of what's reflected here. Our core markets are, uh, New York is probably our number one driver domestically. Um, Washington DC, Chicago, Baltimore, Boston. Uh, those are really kind of core markets domestically. And then when you look at international markets, China, Australia, Canada, uh, the United Kingdom and Mexico are international, really the big kind of paid, what we call paid media markets or tier one markets. Uh, so that's what you'll see kind of on here. Our flow chart goes year round starting this fall all the way through next year. And we kind of focus on the, what we call shoulder seasons to drive visitation in periods that were, you know, not as busy. There's a lot of people here during the summer, but we want to drive business for our partners and our hoteliers and all our businesses here kind of on the shoulder seasons, which are really the fall and the winter of the, of the year. And the weather here is beautiful year round, so that's easier for us to do as a destination. So this kind of just gives you a snapshot of that media kind of flow chart of when we're running this advertising and market. The way we kind of expanded this campaign into digital and outdoor um, is including a lot of our different iconic destinations. You'll see the Hollywood sign here again, obviously, Warner Brothers Studios, Universal Studios, Venice Beach, um, the Griffith Observatory. These are all very iconic locations. And excuse me, a lot of these come out, came out in our research too of what's, what resonates in our different international markets as well. So we're really gonna kind of focus on bringing those out. These are bus wraps that we're doing in New York City that will start running uh, as early as this week. And they'll run for uh, four weeks and they'll be accompanied with bus panels and bus shelter advertising throughout the city. Uh, wow. Kind of hitting home with everyone is welcome and our Discover Los Angeles branding. So these are two-sided. Yes. Uh, these are the, the, the city sightseeing oh, double okay. tour, the double tour buses. You just said if, that. Yeah. No, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> no worries. So these are really, um, if you've ever been to New York, these are pretty prominent and they're really moving billboards. And the beauty of these is sometimes there's a lot of traffic in New York and they kind of stay put yeah. for a long time in one place. <laughs> so they, uh, they really serve as, rather than moving quite a bit, they're really kind of placed around the city and they're, uh, they're, they're great visually and a lot of impact in the city. So that's just part of what we're doing for the advertising. It'll be supplemented with um, pretty heavy digital campaign, video digital campaign, um, in addition to digital banners and quite a bit of social on Facebook and Instagram uh, throughout all the different markets that I mentioned earlier. Um, and we've taken a lot of the content that we have we did with the Welcome, uh, Everyone is Welcome campaign. We took a lot of that content and repurposed into the shorter vignettes, video vignettes, 30 second clips, 10 second clips, and we're running that all through social. And we're, we, we've made that kind of modular where we can do different neighborhoods and different uh, culturally you know, diverse kind of versions of those spots and all that, so they'll, they'll be running digitally on all, all these different channels. That's the back of the bus. 
any questions so far? And John, the, the yeah. um, vignettes that you're talking about, which will be able to delve really into the neighborhoods, those are mm -hmm. going to be primarily on our social. Yeah, primarily social and digital, paid digital as well. Yeah. So let me uh, play this. This is this first one is a 30 second uh, version, and it's an unedited. It's not a final version, but we're we're finalizing this. But it's pretty much done. But you'll get a, a peek at this, and this is what you'll uh, kind of see in our video digital advertising that um, will be running. So that'll end on discoverlosangeles.com with our URL, and it'll say hashtag everyone is welcome. And then let me go back to this one. Mm -hmm. and, then, this one, this is a second, this is a 15 second version, um, just a shorter version, but I'll play it. It's, this one's focused specifically on um, downtown. So that's a 15 second version. So there's quite a few of these. Something that appear on a Facebook ad. Yes, exactly. Instagram stories, yeah, um, Facebook. So there's quite a bit of those that will build out uh, based on that. Um, and what's really, what was really great about this campaign, you'll notice a lot of the characters in here and the talent. Most of those weren't talent, hired casting talent. We found those people, we did sort of run and gun on the street. A lot of those are real tourists or Angelinos. And I think that natural sort of organic vibe of that comes through on the, on the commercials. And um, we didn't necessarily cast like we typically do, you typically do in a commercial. It was really kind of the realistic view of Los Angeles. So that came through quite a bit on this. Um, and that's that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, we, we had a meeting this morning to talk about, you know, again, how modular it can be in terms of really being able to delve into the neighborhoods and, you know, having the, the plane, the air, uh, paper planes as the metaphor, it, it really yeah. gives it a really warm experience flying through Los Angeles. So we're pretty excited about it. And then so the uh, going back to the launch, you're looking at this month, next month to... Yeah, everything will down. be... New York will start this week, and then Australia starts in actually this week on digital, and we'll also start outdoor in Australia in November. And then we have outdoor um, placed in New York City as well. And then all the digital will kind of be up, up and running full force in November. And then all the way through next year, uh, we end around May. Yeah, when's the timeline? Okay. Yeah, so so, so it pretty much runs two media flights, the fall and the winter, but mm -hmm. pretty much from now until uh, end of May. And I'm, I'm assuming you have, uh, as far as measuring this effectiveness, mm -hmm. you're looking at the impressions, the bookings, yep. and yeah, we do we do quite a bit of uh, analytics on this, and not only through the digital ads, we'll pixel all our ads. Mm -hmm. We measure impressions. We measure ROI on. Uh, we do a, a brand tracker study that we do every year. And we also track um, visitation through our uh, LAX data and everything coming in. So we'll we'll see inflection points throughout the year of um, visitations coming in, and also through our hotels, obviously, occupancy and ADR and all that. So um, we were planning our summer trip um, through our timeshare over this last summer through Aruba, and I was looking at rates and looking at different um, restaurants and such. Next thing I know, like within the next hour on my Facebook feed. I saw like ads about Aruba. Oh yeah. So that's crazy. Like who's watching? It's crazy and scary. Yeah, they, so they'll, I don't know if you noticed. They'll serve it up on your Gmail. We'll serve it up on your email now, oh uh, to goodness. a certain extent. But um, so we're gonna take advantage of that too, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, yeah. the digital ad. Okay. We do all those annoying ads too. <laughs> we follow you everybody. Them, Just haunt them all. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. the, the pixel that don't. you. I'm sorry. The yeah. pixel that he's talking. Is interesting. We'll actually know if you've opened a Discover Los Angeles ad, how long it took you to 
arrive in Los Angeles from the time you open the ad to the time you are just Jeez. in Los Angeles. So <laughs> yeah. So that, that the way that works too is it's, it's a little creepy. <laughs> sort of tied to your mobile phone, and they'll know if you see it in New York City, and you are end up here in LA within the 30 days. Mm -hmm. It'll know that you went from New York, saw our ad, came from New York, and are in Los Angeles. The now. date and time you arrived in Los Angeles. Oh. So it's technology uh, at its fascinating finest. the amount of detail we get from digital ads. Love the product. It's, it's incredible. I mean, just to be able to see those two pieces really reflects who we are as a city. It's Thank very you. diverse, and I'm looking forward to, the, to seeing it be successful moving forward. Um, join me, Mr. Gregorian, as you heard. Anything you want to add? Um, just a, kind of a stepping back question, because you showed the iconic Los Angeles location, but I noticed that Critical is not a Los Angeles location. Um, it was actually the city of Burbank, which caused me to remember that, um, and this is not related to this campaign, but just more broadly, um, one of the recommendations made a electronic point of information two years ago was consolidating our outreach efforts with the state of California mm -hmm. and with different cities in the county. Um, how have we done over the last two years in tracking this down? Mm -hmm. that, that actually seems like it's worked. And one of the recommendations was an interpretation that actually was feasible mm -hmm. and that it mm -hmm. might be something that would be productive. And so have we made any progress in terms of yeah, I think there's probably a couple answers to that question. Um, one of the things from a marketing side is we have really tried to understand how is the visitor seeing Los Angeles. And so the focus groups conducted by John and his department um, really help us identify those icons. And what we learn is that people see, they don't know where the boundaries stop and start. So, you know, it's a Burbank, okay, or Santa Monica, okay. Um, and so, from our perspective, we really need to sell to the customer. Um, by I know the way, it doesn't matter from our perspective either because they're visiting some place in Burbank. They're staying in a Los Angeles hotel and we're getting yep. revenue yep. and yep. economic activity. So. And then the other thing that we um, have done is we work very, very closely um, with the state of California. Um, in fact, Visit California, they have a very large budget and they have really expanded their um, cooperative marketing. Um, and we were just talking about it earlier today. That I think you know, our staff is on every single one of their marketing committees, and so Los Angeles' presence and our the amount of collaboration with we, we do with them has really grown. And then thirdly, um, we work closely with the other convention and visitors bureaus within the county of Los Angeles. We pretty much stay within the county at the moment, um, but certainly Santa Monica, West Hollywood, uh, Pasadena, Beverly Hills, Marina Del Rey, they all have visitor bureaus. And so while it's not a, a official um, you know, coalition or anything, we work on a per project basis with them. And certainly working internationally is much easier to do. Um, you know, everybody has their you know, local politics, um, but I think everybody understands that the further you are away from Los Angeles, the, more Los, the bigger Los Angeles is to the visitor. And so that has worked very well. Yes. Which benefits norms that are ethical to the people staying in Santa Monica and Beverly Hills and Los Angeles. Uh, and then when their budget gets filled with DOT and other supplies, then they can push on to Los Angeles for production. So conversely, we can do like Santa Ana and Hollywood and Disney and all that. So we, we are a regional tourism market to be sure. Right. Um, we, we've done it in a number of different ways, uh, particularly when we are going to trade shows or we're going to host client events, that kind of thing, then we do share costing um, so that we're not just picking up the cost for everybody. They're contributing to that. And if we have done um, certain other, it's, it's difficult so much on the advertising side because you really have to make those decisions about the markets and where you're spending the money. And I can I, and I can add, give you a, a more specific example. We when we we develop these neighbor what we call our neighborhood videos, mm -hmm. we did 35 of them. Uh, four or five of them were outside of city of LA, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, Marina del Rey, and there was one more I can't remember it. But they paid into that to do their own videos. We did we sort of funded all of them, but they paid into they're doing their own videos. There was a co-op basically 
paid into that. When we do the commercials, uh, we shot in Santa Monica, kind of in and around Venice and Santa Monica, you know, to kind of get that focus of it's very iconic across the world. Um, but they help us with costs for shooting there so we don't have to pay things like that and they kind of help push it out. So there's a lot of collaboration between the different departments because we know we're focused on city, you know, most of the time, but when there's different things that we have to kind of accomplish, those different bureaus or tourism offices or partners, in fact, the, the Warner Brothers that you pointed out, that's actually a corporate partner that sits in a very different bucket that um, we get revenue from to promote Warner Brothers Studios specifically, um, kind of worldwide. So they are partners in that, so we include them just like we do Universal Studios as well. But Warner Brothers, even though they're outside, although they've rebranded to be Warner Brothers Studio Tour Hollywood now, mm. I know they're in Burbank, but um, <laughs> they changed their name on purpose. But like that's the LA, example. Uh, LA Angels of Anaheim. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's right. And it, I think it benefits Carson us, Carson Chargers of Los Angeles. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Appreciate Hi. the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, uh, no action needed on this item. It's information only, so we'll just note and file. Item number one. Uh, we now have this recording, as mentioned, in a quorum. Uh, any um, general public comment? None. Okay, we'll close general public comment. With that, Mr. Kokorin, if I can um, direct your attention to the agenda, looking at consent items, um, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would you like to pull any of those? Again, consent two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so without objection, we'll approve those items. And our final item will be item number three. Item three. Communication from the Board of the Airport Commissioners and CAO report relative to Resolution 26347, authorizing and approving the issuance and sale of Department of the Airports Los Angeles International Airport revenue bonds in one or more series in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $2.2 million. Good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm sorry, do you have any cards on this item? No, sir. Okay. Uh, my name is Ryan Yakubic. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Los Angeles World Airport, and uh, I will keep the airplane-themed uh, start <laughs> your meeting going here. Uh, the item before you today is authorization for the issuance of $2.2 uh, billion in revenue and revenue refunding uh, bonds at the airport, as well as the authorization for a negotiated method of sale. We put together a short deck just to walk you through how this fits into our, our overall plan uh, at LAWA. Uh, this is a, a, uh, a portion of a financial forecast uh, outlining roughly $7.7 .7 billion in ongoing and near-term capital projects here at the airport. Uh, this forecast was pulled from our 2017 bond official statement. Uh, that full forecast, uh, as well as all the details around it, can be found in the 2017 bond official statement, which can uh, be accessed on our website. Of the $7.7 .7 billion, roughly $3.8 billion is expected to be debt funded. Uh, that $3.8 billion breaks down into $1.5 billion, which has already been issued, uh, about $900 million, uh, which will be issued under a previous authorization, as well as $1.4 billion, which is a part of the current uh, request before you. As you can see, we maintain a, a well-diversified funding mix. Only about half of our overall funding for this program comes from debt. Um, and uh, of that 50%, the allocation uh, of those funds to uh, or bond funding for these projects is largely based on uh, our ability to recover those costs through uh, great methodologies in place already at the airport. Uh, we also are looking to preserve cash for our future landside improvement program. Um, certainly, uh, we want to keep a balanced, broad-based uh, funding program to uh, minimize our reliance on debt uh, just as a general practice, and certainly uh, all of this in the backdrop of very low historic uh, interest rates, uh, making the timing somewhat attractive from that standpoint. So of the $2.2 .2 billion requested, uh, 1.4 is for new money. Uh, roughly $800 million uh, of the request is for uh, revenue refunding bonds. We actually issued bonds in 2008 that are coming up now for their first cycle of refunding, uh, which we believe will be at, at fairly attractive savings uh, to the airport. Uh, 
Uh, we are recommending a negotiated method of sale on the first $1.1 billion of this, uh, of this request. We'll be coming back with the uh, additional request for further negotiated sales on the additional $1.1 billion. But as those are expected to be out for another probably two years, we want to get a little bit closer to those transactions to select the bankers for that um, when, uh, when those transactions are a little bit closer in the windshield. Uh, in terms of the banking teams, uh, we have selected three banking teams. We undertook a competitive process um, that scored the bankers on uh, their financial recommendations in their proposals, uh, rating agency strategy recommendations, as well as their overall fees. We definitely maintain a diversified banking pool with uh, not only your large bulge bracket banks and money center banks, but also uh, local and emerging uh, banks. We like to spread the opportunity around to different banks. This, does well, and we've had a, a, a lot of success in um, in bringing up smaller banks and providing opportunity. This is good for us when we have the ups and downs in the financial markets. They team, tend to be a little less impacted um, and, and maintain a, access to those markets for us. But it is still very important for us to have the large banks on board as well. So uh, of the firms selected, uh, they include J.P. Morgan Securities, Goldman Sachs Securities, and Ramirez and & Company. Uh, these are the three uh, lead bankers, and then there's a cast of supporting co-managing bankers uh, under, under each of those. So um, with that, uh, this transa these transactions assure uh, uh, or the structure of these transactions assures sufficient support during sales. We typically have two co-managers for each senior manager. Um, those managers are there to step in and provide support in selling the bonds. Uh, it does provide opportunity. Uh, every transaction has at least one local or emerging bank on the team, uh, so providing that uh, opportunity as well. Um, this mix of, of different banks does broaden our overall investor base uh, across the market, uh, generally promoting competition and lowering our cost of borrowing. So, and certainly um, all of these all of these banks that have been included are uh, are currently in compliance with the city's responsible banking ordinances. So um, that is the, the overview to all of this. Uh, probably the only missing piece in this, um, this does not impact the general fund. It's uh, only paid out of the airport's revenue funds. And I'm here to take your question. The reason why we have Mr. Kokorin here, just to make sure. And I think, uh, I think you, you sold me with that last question. <laughs> <Good. laughs> Always an important thing to make. Right. <laughs> okay, appreciate the, um, the report and presentation. Again, it's an overall $14 billion modernization project at the, um, at the airport. Um, Got a, we've got a ways to go on the financing as we move forward on a critical project that's um, going to improve our airport and the uh, neighboring community. So really appreciate the presentation. Mr. Krikorian, questions? No, that's it. Thank you. Fantastic. So without objection, we'll approve item number three that's before us now. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. CAO, you good? Yes. Okay. We recommend approval. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, with that, any other items on the agenda? That concludes your agenda, sir. Okay, so with that, we're now adjourned. Thank you so much.